Welcome to sixth grade history. Uh, this is for lesson 147. We're looking at pages 286 to 289. We're starting chapter 16. We're going to take a look at some maps to begin with. <clears throat> and so um, we're going to see if you can see them on the, on the screen. If you can't, um, I'll give you the page numbers for the map in the back. So we're going to be on the Atlas 6, so it's pages 350 and 351. Um, so we've looked at that before, but we're specifically looking at the islands, um, and the West Indies, islands of the Caribbean, okay? Um, I'm going to adjust this, and we're going to be taking a look at this map. So um, we've talked about... Um, we just finished up Mexico and Central America, so now we're going to be looking at um, the islands and, and um, the discovery of those islands is very important to our, um, to the settling of our, of our country and all of these countries because this is when, when Christopher Columbus in 1492 set sail, nobody knew about these two continents, um, North and South America, uh, besides the people that actually lived there. They didn't, there was not a known fact that, um, that there were these two countries, um, two big continents that were uh, between Europe and Africa and Asia and Australia on the other side, okay? So that's, that's where this, this idea that um, when he came across that, they, that he thought he was in um, near Asia in the West Ind or in the East Indies, um, that's why he called them the Indies. And we're gonna talk about that um, some. But first of all, let's take a look at the, um, places that he would have been in. And San Salvador is where he landed first. So it's a little tiny island that's um, at the top of, just to the west, no, the east of Florida. Um, and so it's on my map here, it's a little gray island. Down here on the, the green map, this is the early settlements map. Um, it's right there. And these islands were known um, as the West Indies because he called them the Indies, thinking that he had made it all the way to um, the, the uh, East Indies, but he did not. And that's where we distinguish them. Now we distinguish them because they were, um, originally those were just the Indies islands. But now we have to have the West Indies and the East Indies, um, and that's, this is where we got it. So um, Christopher Columbus lands on San, San Salvador, and San Salvador is um, that island there. And so let's look at these islands that are in here. So we've got Cuba, it's the biggest island. Um, there's Haiti and Dominican Republic, they make up a, an island that we call Hispaniola, Hispaniola. There's Puerto Rico and Jamaica, okay? Um, and so then if you can see the same, same islands are down here on the green one, um, but it may be, um, these ones make it just a little bit bigger for you, um, even though I don't know if you can read it from, from there. But that, those are the islands of the West Indies, the main islands. There are others, but we're just gonna be looking at those today. And so um, you've probably all heard, um, I know Morgan and, and Ryan have, but I'm sure McKinley have heard this phrase, um, the saying in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And that is a way to remember, number one, who? discovered America, and number two, um, when it happened. So that's, that's something that, um, you know, even some of the little kids can quote to you. They love, they love hearing that. But um, so Christopher Columbus got, um, 
his uh, got ships. He went to um, the king and queen of Spain, the Ferdinand and Isabella, and he went to them and he said, I want to go and I want to get um, goods, trade goods, gold uh, from the Indies, and I'm going to bring them back to, to Europe, back to, to Spain. And so he <coughs> took three small ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, um, and so, and then he had 90 men that went with him and he traveled, um, and, but the, the trip took much longer than they expected. Um, it was about, um, they'd been traveling for about, let's see, four, over four weeks and the, the crew just started to mutiny. They'd said, you are trying to kill us all. We're gonna get out here in the middle of nowhere and we're not going to um, be able to, to make it. Uh, we're gonna run out of food and all this stuff. And um, another thing that people thought um, back then was that the world was flat. And Christopher Columbus had heard uh, that there was a scientist that had said, no, the world is round. Um, and that's, you know, we see that in, in scripture and, and all of that. And, but there were people that believed that, that it was flat. And so if you sailed far enough, you just fall off the edge. And so Christopher Columbus said, no, that's not true. Um, it's round and we're going to sail around. We're, we're not going to fall off the edge of the world. Um, which he was correct there. You're not going to fall off the edge of the world because that's God made it as a, as a, as a sphere and um, a way for us to travel all around it. Um, but anyway, so on October 12th in 1492, they spotted land and they hadn't seen any land so far. And so this was a big deal. It was, it was that, that moment that, that everything they'd been working for was going to, um, was, there was gonna be fruit from it. It was gonna be worth something, okay? So Christopher Columbus um, lands on San Salvador. The people that were there were the Arawak, Ar Aero, Aero, uh, hmm. Aero, Arawak, sorry. I, I practiced that and then I forgot. Um, so they were the Arawak, people and the Carib people <coughs> and he called them Indians because he thought he was in, the, in um, south of India in those islands and so he, he called them all Indians. Um, we get some of our words from these two groups of people. Uh, from the Arawak we get maize which is corn, potato, and tobacco and then from the Carib people we get our word canoe but now he named the Carib people because Carib <clears throat> in Spanish, um, actually is the word, or close to the word for cannibals. And so these people were not very, very kind. They were fierce um, people. And so he had called them, he named them. Um, the Arawak were a gentle tribe. Um, and so they were, they were kind. But, um, this was, this was the start of, of this settlement of the new world. So he searches for gold and he asks the people because they had some, some little um, gold ornaments that they wore. Um, and he said, where did you get these? I, I want, I want these, um, I want to know where these came from and I want to be able to go get them myself. And so um, they, they had said, Cuba. Well, he misunderstood because he was he was thinking of where uh, of, that he was in the um, east, which he was not. But he thought about he thought that he was, and so he thought they said Sapengo, which is another word for Japan. Um, and so, <coughs> pardon me. There there were some some uh, misunderstandings due to what he thought, um, and so that's why. Um, this was so uh, crazy of a, of a thing. And so um, they named the sea there, the Caribbean Sea, called them the West Indies, there's Cuba. 
So then he traveled around and he traveled the coast of Hispaniola, those two, two countries, Haiti and uh, Dominican Republic are on those. And um, the Santa Maria sank off the coast of Haiti. Um, and the in, a, a friendly Indian chief helped salvage some of the cargo um, from, or save the cargo. So he built a fort there and left 40 men, about 40 men to look for gold. Um, and he was still searching for gold. So he sailed back to Spain with the Nina and the Pinta, the other two ships. Um, but he took several Indians captive with him. Um, and so he went as, as his return, he got, um, he was welcomed back and Ferdinand and Isabella, they called him, uh, they had paid for the trip, of course. Um, I may, I may not have mentioned that they paid for it, but that, that's um, how he was able to go on this um, excursion. And he was given the titles Admiral of the Ocean Sea and the Viceroy of the Indians, and so, uh, or of the Indies. So he was, um, he was praised for everything that he was able to accomplish, okay? So then we, we see, sorry, Haiti and Ferdinand and Isabella. So um, he had several other voyages that, that don't get talked about as much. And so we're just gonna hit on those just briefly. Um, in September of 1493, his second voyage, um, he arrived in Hispaniola and he founded the city um, Isabella. It's the first European city in the Americas. Um, set up a government there. He also discovered Puerto Rico and Jamaica and some of the smaller islands. On his third voyage in, 19, in 1498, <clears throat> he went further south. He got caught in some, they're called doldrums and they're, um, they're, it was a place that the wind varies so drastically that it'll be completely calm and absolutely no wind. And then all of a sudden there's wind and it's just crazy. And so um, he got stuck in those and couldn't go anywhere um, for eight days. And um, you know, they, they were close to the equator. And so some of that, they, they had some intense heat. And so finally they, they were carried to South America where he was, um, he discovered the Arenico River and named that. And then his fourth voyage, he was off the coast of Honduras and discovered the Isthmus of Panama. Okay, and so um, those were some of his voyages. He died in 1506 um, in Spain, but he was one of the greatest seamen the world has ever known because his discoveries led to other explorers going and the settlement of, of the, the old world settled the new world. And really we wouldn't be probably where we are today without Christopher Columbus. And so you're, you're gonna read about the colonial times to modern times, some different things that they had to face um, with that, uh, with this settling of new land. Balboa was, is the last thing in his, in the people in history box on the next page, um, page 288. He was the first European to view the Pacific Ocean. He um, had traveled and he was, um, he went to, he actually went to the island of Haiti and he had set up um, a, and a, or no, he established a settlement in, the, in Southern Panama. Um, and so when uh, the King of Spain heard about this, he named him as governor of that settlement. And so, um, but he also was one that was looking for gold and wanted, um, and was always looking for that next, next big thing that he could discover. And one of those, you know, was discovering gold was a big deal. And so, um, but the, the people in that settlement had told him about um, the Inca empire in Peru and, and how they were, they were wealthy and, um, 
and they, they had told him about this huge sea. And so he makes this trip and he, and he gets to, uh, and it's just over the, the hill. And so he actually climbs the hill himself, gets to the top or a mountain, and he's the first to view, the first European to view the Pacific Ocean. And so um, he names it the South Sea, um, which it was later by Bengelin called the Pacific Ocean, which Pacific means peaceful. And so those some of the things that, that had happened that really um, led to how our, how we came to be here, um, it's really neat to read about and, and discover what, um, what these men were doing. Now, not all of them treated people right. Um, there, there was, of course, you know, Christopher Columbus took Indian slaves back with him to Spain, and, and you're going to read about the, how um, African black slaves were brought over. Um, to the West Indies, and that's that's how that started. But um, it's still it's still good to study these things and to to learn about the people, <coughs> because you know they were human. Of course, they were going to make mistakes and they were going to mess up. And and many of them, um, most of Spain is Catholic, and so um, they they didn't have. Um, I didn't know the truth of, of the Bible and, and what, what we believe. Many of those, many of these people did not believe the same way. And so their view of how to treat people and, and different things is, is so, so different from how we would, um, hopefully treat them. But, um, it's still, still worth it to, to study. This is our history and we really do, um, really should study it and really should be um, learning more about these things. So I'm going to let you go ahead and read those pages and answer the comprehension check there. There's only three questions. Answer those on paper. And <clears throat> pardon me. Um, and don't forget to um, look over the map of the islands again, um, pages 350 and 351. And then um, we'll see you in the next lesson.